आत्मत्वम गिरिया मोती ही सहोचरा प्राणा शरीरम ग्रहम पूजाते विषय भोग रचना निद्रा समाधि स्थिति ही समचार पदयो प्रदक्षिण विधि स्तोत्राणि सर्वागिरो यज्ञत कर्म करोमि तत्तदाकिलम शंभो तवाराधनम शंकर O Lord, Thou art Myself, My mind, I liken to be the Divine Mother, My vital ears to Thy followers, and My body to Thy temple. My enjoyments I regard as offerings made unto Thee. My sleep is a form of samadhi. My wanderings are like circumambulations while my words are prayers offered unto thee, O Lord. Whatever I do, may it all be as worship made unto thee. Om Shanti, 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 peace, peace, peace be unto all. This morning, our subject is Ladder of Spiritual Life. Today, we are observing Sri Ramakrishna's birthday anniversary service. Spiritual Life. Sometimes I deeply think about life. We are born and we will die. In between this lifespan, is very precious, extremely precious. Sometimes we question, why are we in this world? What is the purpose of human life? What is the goal? These questions arise in human hearts. <coughs> we are all <coughs> looking for peace and bliss. The Upanishad tells us <coughs> bliss is only in the infinite, not in the finite. Infinite. We have many goals. Some people are <clears throat> doctors, engineers, politicians, swamis. Many, many people have their various goals. But these are all finites. These goals in this world are all finite goals. When we go, when we are retired in a nursing home, we, at that time we try to evaluate our life. What have I done? What have I achieved? It is really something that about life. What is the fulfillment of life? There are two kinds of life, materialistic life, spiritual life. Materialistic life makes people selfish, and selfishness never makes a person happy. I sometimes give this, unselfishness is God, Swamiji defined. Do you know how they look at it? Here's a beautiful mango. If I eat by myself, only I shall get one unit joy. Same mango if I distribute several people, and if I see a smile of all their spaces, I shall get 10 units peace, 10 units joy. That is the way I think about life. They only live, only for others. About life.
our topic, the ladder of spiritual life. Ladder. We know ladder, we know the function of the ladder. If we want to climb on the roof or on a high place, we need a ladder. We cannot jump on the roof, which is not possible. We move step by step. Similarly, in spiritual life, we go step by step. We cannot get Nirvigalpa Samadhi overnight. So, in a spiritual life, we need a teacher. In the Chanda Gupanishad, there is a beautiful mantra, Acharyavan Purusho Veda. The person who has a teacher, only he knows. He knows Brahman. Teacher. He guides us. He directs us to our goal. The story goes, a man was kidnapped, blindfolded, tied with a tree, and the robbers left. A good Samaritan came, released that person, and asked, where do you come from? Where is your home? My home is such and such place, Panchaludesha. This good Samaritan tells that traveler, you go this direction, straight north, then right, in this way, you will reach your home. So that is the way a guru, a teacher, guides. Shrutriyam Brahmanishtam. In ancient time, the disciples would go to the teacher with sacrificial wood in their hands. That means shraddha, faith, devotion. And the guru instructs. It is extremely important to have a good teacher. Even the avatars have teachers. Rama's teacher was Bhushishta. Krishna's teacher was Shandipan Muni. Buddha's teacher was Anarkalam. Christ's teacher was John the Baptist. Chaitanya's teachers were Ishwar Puri, Keshav Bharati. Ramakrishna's teachers were Bhairavi Brahmani, Tothapuri. Even the Abhadars had teachers. Sometimes I say, you cannot be a doctor by reading a book. You will have to go to medical school. You will have to follow their process. Four years, five years, six years, eight years. Then you will be a doctor. Then you can treat others. Similarly, in the spiritual life, we need a good teacher who can train us so that we can realize God, we can, we can reach our goal. As Sri Ramakrishna said, if we talk about Mariana, Mariana, you will not be intoxicated. You will have to paste marijuana, then make a sharbat and then drink, and then you will get intoxication. Similarly, only talk about God, 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 we will not do anything. You need practice. Practice makes a person perfect. The guru can cook food for you. Guru can make, but you will have to eat. Guru can make fire, but you need the heat. You have to go near the fire. That is the way spiritual life works. As Krishna says in the Gita, Tadviddi pranipate na pariprasne na shevaya upadekshanti te gyanam gyanina stata darshina. Tadviddi, no God. Tad, pranipate, through humility. Then ask questions, and then serve your guru. Then he will teach you. Shankara also mentioned, what kind of guru? There are so many gurus are in the market. 
Shrutriyo, Fabrijino, Akamahoto. That is the definition Shankara gave to a good guru. He knows the inner meaning and the outer meaning of the scripture. He knows what he is teaching. A good doctor is very, very, has full faith that my medicine will work. Abrigino, his character must be pure, flawless, or come out desireless. He does not do business with the religion. No commercial motive. All loving, compassionate. That is the way Shankara defines a true teacher. Spiritual life is a journey from alone to alone. You came alone, you will go alone. Practice. As the guru, as the disciple, before accepting anybody as a guru, you must test. Guru also tests. In Vedanta tradition, there are eight ways they go, they instruct. First, four external disciplines and four internal disciplines. Four external disciplines are Mitta Bostu Viveka, discriminate, what is real, what is unreal. This world is apparently real, not absolutely real. The thing which is real exists in the past, present, and future. There is no such thing in this world. Reality. All is sick, what is real? As Sri Ramakrishna says, Age Ishwar, Pore Jagat. First God, then the world. If you reverse it, you will be confused. Next is, Iha Mutra Falabhoga Viraga. You must practice detachment. Attachment brings pain. Detachment brings joy. Now, some people think Renunciation or detachment means you will have to renounce your family home and go to the forest and be a monk. Not necessarily. Even we see some monks are very attached. Real detachment is to realize that this world is not real. So I shall not be attached to this world. You may be in any station of life. You may be a householder, you may be a monk. It doesn't matter. God realization does not depend upon the color of the cloth. Third, discipline. Samodamadi shatka shampati. You must have control of the mind, control of the senses. You must know how to draw the mind from the sense objects, forbearance, self settledness, and faith. These are the six treasures. And the fourth, mumukshuttam, burning desire for liberation. If the fire catches your cloth, you do, you do not go to lie down. You jump into the swimming pool to remove, to stop that fire. Similarly, a burning desire for liberation. I want to be free. I want to realize God in this life. Mumukshu. And four internal disciplines, you must listen day in, day out. Asupte, amrite. Till you go to sleep, till you die, constantly listen. Listen about God, about the spiritual life. Only listening will not do. Monon, you must reflect. What I have learned, what I have listened, then I think about it. And next, when you are ref reflected enough, then meditate. 
Atmavo are drushtei bu, mantei bu, shrutei bu, mantei bu, nididhyasetei bu. Drushtei bu. This Atma needs to be realized. How? Through listening, through reflecting, and through meditating. And the fourth is tattumushi. When Guru gives the mantra that you are Brahman, thou art that, you must understand what it means. It means that you are the Atman. Please show me, we do not have any concept of the Atman. You have. That your I, a consciousness, pure I consciousness is the Atman. That is within you. With the power of that Atman, you function. You do not see the Atman. You can see the manifestation of the Atman in your system. Jnana Shakti, Ichha Shakti, Kriya Shakti. That Atman, the power of the Atman first manifests in the Buddhi. So we have the knowledge, power of knowledge. Ichha Shakti manifests in the mind. Willpower and Kriya Shakti, power of action, manifest in the body and the senses. So you do not see the Atman, but you see the manifestation of the Atman in the human system. The more you meditate, that, that Shakti will increase, that power will increase. We'll have to go step by step. Similarly, in the yoga system of Patanjali, we find eight limbs of yoga. If we think that I shall attain awesome prajnata samadhi, but you will have to go through the seven stages. First is yama, ahimsa, non-violence, truthfulness, all the disciplines you will have to practice. Niyama, cleanliness, <coughs> stagi, posterity, devotion, that you will have to practice. <coughs> Asana, posture, pranayama, breath control, pratyara, withdrawing the mind from the sense objects, dharana, concentration, dhyana, meditation, then samadhi. So without going through the seven steps, you cannot go to the last samadhi state. That is the method, that is the procedure we will have to follow in spiritual life. Same thing in the path of devotion. We see nine steps of the ladder of love. Madhu, Ru, hmm? Rupa Goswami mentioned in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Adau Shraddha, the first step is Shraddha, faith. Faith on what? Shastra and Guru. The words of the scripture and the words of the Guru. You must have faith. That is the working faith. In the second step, holy company. You will have to see that what other these holy people, how they practice spiritual disciplines. So seeing them, you can, you can practice. You see, we need some role models. The moment you see, then, you, oh, I can also do that. Sometimes when you go to a gym, we see some beautiful body, you know, muscles, um, bodybuilders, and the weightlifters, seeing their muscles, we see standing in the mirror, I also feel that I shall be like that, you know. Take some jumbles and barbels, we lift. It, you know, seeing those bodies, we get inspiration. That I can be like a muscular body, like, like Mr. Universe. Same thing in the spiritual life. When we see some people are practicing spiritual disciplines, are very happy, Oh, I must follow that person. In the third stage, bhajana kriya, practice. 
Japan meditation study, sit in the shrine in the morning and evening, practice. In the fourth stage, the moment you start practice, honor to nibritti, all of your bad tendencies, bad thoughts will slowly, slowly will disappear. Because these spiritual things are entering inside, bad things are going out. Let me give an example how it works. You put an ink pot here. That ink pot is all dirt, dry inks, then cobwebs. Many years that ink pot was not used. All of a sudden, you want to clean it. How do you clean it? You bring a hose and put water inside with force. Then first, all the dirt, dust, and all this ink will come out. Finally, you will find only fresh air, fresh water is coming because its whole inside is clean. That is the spiritual life works. When Guru gives a mantra, that mantra enters inside. And then it pushes out all the bad past tendencies. That is the way spiritual life works. You must counteract your bad tendencies by good tendencies. That is called honor to nibritti. In the next stage comes nishtha, steadfast devotion. Nishtha. I saw some monks. I was staying in, in one room, we are sharing that room. He came from Calcutta. I was in my in in in, in Kamarpukur in 1962. I saw that monk whole day working in Calcutta, came, it was sometimes 10 o'clock. Then I asked him, then he, Uncle, will you not teach? Oh, no, no, no. I have not repeated my mantra and I have not read the gospel. I took a vow that without reading the gospel, two pages, and without repeating my mantra, I shall not eat. I was really appreciating his nishtha, state for devotion. That nishtha brings the strength of your habit. If some Vaishnavites, they will, perhaps 10,000 mantra, 20,000 mantra, they will repeat every day. Very full nishtha. Next, when you have this kind of nishtha, then comes ruchi, taste. You start to get the taste of the spiritual life. What is the taste? Joy. All the time you will find something festivity is going on inside. And you will float in bliss. An undercurrent will flow inside. That is the way you Whatever you think that you will be. Nishtha. And the, the taste is ruchi, nisha. Intoxication. I was telling a story to the Kali Mandir people. Do you know what? Sri Ramakrishna said, do you get roseate intoxication in the morning and evening? Gulapi Nesha. <coughs> then I explained what Gulapi Nesha means. Suppose you can, um, you are, uh, you are, um, you al drink alcohol and you are addicted to alcohol. If somebody in the, brings a bottle of whiskey, seeing that bottle you are happy, but you have not yet drunk it. Then they must, when the waitress remove the cork, that the smell comes, you are very happy. But you have not yet drunk it. That is called gulapi nesha. The moment you see it, the moment you smell that alcohol, you get joy. That is called gulapi, roseate intoxication. And when you drink it, you are drunk. That's all. Sri Ramakrishna used this word, Gulapinesha Hoy. 
Do you get in roseating intoxication in the morning and evening, chanting God's name? In the seventh stage, mahashakti, attachment. Attachment. Without seeing God, I shall die. You can see the condition of the gopis. They are so much attached to Krishna. They forgot their body, they forgot their home, they forgot their family, cooking, all duties, day and night thinking about Krishna. That is called real ashukti. We have, um, we have ashukti, we have attached to our worldly objects, but not this kind of ashukti. The Vaishnava teacher mentioned when that ashukti comes, when that attachment for God comes, do you know what are the signs? First is kshanti. Kshanti means in every stage of your life you are unperturbed. Rog, shok, badi, grief, poverty, suffering, unperturbed. Because you surrender yourself to God. Second, when the bhava, sorry, when the bhava comes, bhava means ecstasy. In the second sign, abhartha kalutta, means constant recollectedness of God. He doesn't misuse a single moment without thinking of God. Then comes virakti. If somebody talks to you about worldly things, you are disgusted. <laughs> Why are you talking all these worldly things to me? You really do not like worldly talk at all. <clears throat> then manushunnata, effacement of ego, no ego. And last, bakulata, yearning, longing for God. These are the signs develop in a person who experiences ecstasy. And the last stage comes love. When that love dawns in his spiritual life, sometimes he laughs, seeing God. Sometimes when God goes away from, he cries. Sometimes he sings, he dances. At that time, he is in divine ecstasy all the time. These are the nine ladders of love, nine steps of the ladders of love according to Vaishnava tradition. In the field of education, we see that we start with first grade one, grade two, first grade, second grade. Then we go to 12th grade. We finish to get the degree in school. Then we go four years college, finish the college degree. So there is a method, systematic method of this kind of spiritual journey. Same thing in the in the Upanishad we find very interesting. I was thinking quite a bit about the Upanishad that how the stages come one after another. Prajapati Brahma, the creator, announced Sayesho Atma, Apahata Papma, Bijaru, Bimrittu, Vishoka, Bijigitsa, Apipasa, Svetta Gama, Svetta Sankalpa, Svanishtibha, Svabijigyansitibhya. He announced the creator. Esho Atma, this Atman, Apahata Papma, free from sin. Bijaru, free from disease, free from old age, disease. Bimrittu, free from death, free from grief, free from hunger and thirst. This Atman one should seek, one should look for. So, and if you get this Atman, you will get everything, whatever you want in your life. So the gods and demons are very excited. 
they have sent their representatives to the Prajapati. So Indra came, who was the king of gods, and Viruchana, the king of the demons, both went to Prajapati and said, you announce these things, we like to have that Atman. <coughs> Prajapati said, very good. You practice Brahmacharya 32 years in my house. After 32 years, Prajapati said, at that time there was no mirror, Udo Sharabe, there is a big bowl of clear water. He brought in front of them, whatever you see in your eyes, in that reflection, that is the Atman. So he saw that 32 years, they, they did not shave, you know, you know they saw their own bodies. So both left. Virachana realized that body is the Atman. He told all the demons, eat, drink, and be merry, and just take care of the body. Body is our goal. That is called Ashuri Upanishad, Demon Upanishad. That Upanishad, you know, most people practice that Upanishad. Body is the Atman. Then Indra was thinking, how can it be? Body dies. Body is not eternal. So he again he came back. Then Prajapati said, why did you come back? Truth, body dies. Body cannot be the Atman. I am glad that you have come back. Another 32 years. Practiced sadhana. This time he practiced and he realized mind is the Atman, Shapnatma. So again he left, again he came back. Mind also is subject to happiness and misery. It, mind cannot be Atman. I am glad that you are back another 32 years. So another 32 years he realized Shapnatma, this is Shushuptatma. And in this subtle body, in the ignorance and consciousness, that is the Atman. Again he came back. At that time, his Indra's mind was pretty clean. All right, this time, another five years. So after 101 years, Indra realized what is the Atman. You know, if in the present age, if I say 101, show me by that time I will be dead. <laughs> Who cares, for you? Who cares for your Atman, anyhow? <laughs> in another, beautiful stories of these Upanishads. In another, in Taittiriya Upanishad, Bhrigu went to his father, Baruni, and asked, Odihi Bhagavo Brahmeti. Sir, father, please teach me the Brahman. Then do you know what he replied? Yato va imani bhutani jayanti, jina jatani jivanti, yat prayanta visam vishanti, tad vijigyasaswa, tad brahmeti. From where this whole world, this whole universe evolves, the source, where it stays, is sustained, and where it dissolves, merges, that is Brahman. I gave you the instruction, now you go. So his son left and came back. Do you know what he realized? All these beings come from food, sustained by the food. And later on, when they die, they become food. So, Annam Brahma. So, Annam Brahmeti Bhajanath, I know this Anna, food is Brahman. No. Go back. Tapasa Brahma Vijigya Saswa, practice more austerity. And then inquire, ask about Brahman. So again he left. This time he realized prana, the vital force is Brahman. No, go back. He realized next, the mind is Brahman. No, go back. He realized buddhi, intellect is Brahman. No, go back. Then, 
आनंद मेति बजानाथ आनंद धीव खोली मानी भूतानी जायंती आनंद ही न जाता नहीं जीवन थी आनंद ब्लिस इस ब्रह्मन the whole creation comes from bliss stays in bliss merges into bliss in this way it is an evolutionary process this ladder spiritual ladder spiritual experience it comes stage after stage same thing in chandra gopanishad we find shetu ketu aruni father teach me यत आश्रित श्रुत अमत मत अभिज्ञात विजानत तद्रह्म आश्रित श्रुत थी थिंग हुई अनहर्ड कैन बी हर्ड अनोन कैन बी नोन अनसीन कैन बी सीन and um, this is the way he explained what is brahman so after nine instructions he understood what is brahman tattvamo shishetu ketu very interesting you say go brahman is everything give me an example bring a chunk of salt and a bucket of water The sun brought the bucket of water and a chunk of salt. Put it into the water and go. Next morning, the sun came. Where is the salt? It has become one with the water. Taste it. From the top, it is saline. In the middle, it is saline. In the bottom, it is saline. The sun, the salt is saturated, pervaded in the water. Correct? Yes, sir. Similarly, that pure consciousness pervades everything. You cannot see it. You cannot see the salt, but the salt is there, unseen. That is the way this consciousness pervades in everything in every being. You know those examples in the Vedic period, four five thousand years ago, how they demonstrated, gave example of this highest truth. Very interesting. Another place we find Narada, the great sage, going to Shanat Kumara and said, "Aham shochami, I am submerged in grief. I know sixty-four branches of learning, but I have no knowledge of the Atman." So Shanat Kumara began to teach him Atman. After twenty-one instructions, he said. भूमि वो सुखम नल्पे सुखम अस्थि भूमा द इन्फिनिट इज ब्रह्मन द इन्फिनिट इज ब्लिस देयर इज न ब्लिस इन द फाइनाइट ऑब्जेक्ट्स व्हाट डज दिस इन्फिनिट स्टे व्हिच इज द सपोर्ट ऑफ द इन्फिनिट शे मोहिमनी इट इज सपोर्टेड इन इट्स ओन ग्लोरी इट डज नॉट नीड एनी सपोर्ट those are great stories of the upanishad well how shall we know the infinite yatra nanyat po nanyat po shiti nanyat shrinoti nanyat bijanati sabhuma where one does not see anything one does not know anything that is the infinite that means which is beyond the senses we know through the mind we see through the eyes we hear through the ears they are all limited things those are all finite it is beyond everything abang varna shobhu charam how to see that infinite in india there is a custom i do not know that custom now follows or not when the son is married brings the wife at home the mother in law shows the daughter in law urundhati star custom at night 
the mother-in-law will tell the daughter-in-law, do you see the tree? Yes. The upper branch of the tree? Yes. Above the tree is the moon? Yes. Right side of the moon, do you see a big star? Yes. Then that big star has seven stars in circle? Yes. Oh, in that corner, that small star, star? Yes. Next to that star, there is a small star? Yes. Oh, that corner star is the star of Bushishto. And that small star is called Arundhati, Bushishto's wife. My sweet daughter, henceforth you live with your husband like Bushishto and Arundhati. They are always together. They are never separated. It is a custom. It is called Arundhati Naya. To point out the subtle things through this process. You see this, 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 this. This is the way you will, the, you will take your mind to a very minute object. Very wonderful custom. The real religion, spirituality is within. It is an inward journey. God created our senses, our mind, with outgoing tendencies. So we see all external objects. But there are very few. Abrito chakshu, amritottam ichan. They close, they shut their senses with a view to seeing the Atman, amritottam, that immortal, that immortal Atman within. Abrita Chakshu. You know, Hinduism is very vast and liberal. We see people go to the temple with flowers and fruits and go for worship. The priests take those things, offer to the deities, bless the devotees, repeat the mantra, and they take prasad. That is the beginning. That is the beginning of the spiritual life. That is the reason our scripture says, Uttamo Brahma Sat Babu, Dhyana Bhavastu Madhyama. The highest truth is Brahma Sat Babu, I am Brahman. That is the highest. Second step down, meditation. Third step, Stutir Japa, eulogizing, chanting, glorifying God and japam, and lower stage is external worship. But external worship is necessary for some people. Everybody cannot practice I am Brahman. So in Hinduism, we have enough scope. In there is a degradation of devotion also. The Brahmins think God is in the fire. They do the fire sacrifice, the ritualists. The yogis think that God is within the heart. The intellectuals think that God is in the intellect. And some ordinary people think God is in the in the in the images of of the temple, in the temple. So but the illumined soul thinks, Sarvata Pani Padam Tat Sarvata Ukshi Shiru Mukam Sarvata Shruti Man Loki Sarvam Abrita Tishtati. That's a beautiful verse in the 13th chapter of the Gita. His Sarvata Pani Padam, his hands and feet everywhere. His eyes, ears are everywhere. He listens everything. He encompasses the whole universe. That is our goal. That we must have. Seeing God in everything, in every being. Next, four yogas. You see, in our spiritual Hindu, this tradition, we sometimes see there are four kinds of people we find in this world. First, very active. For them, karma yoga. Some are very emotional. For them, bhakti yoga. Some people are very rational. For them, is jnana yoga. 
Some people are extremely contemplative. For them, is Raja Yoga. So these are the various kinds of people in this world, and they can practice various ways. And each path has some ladders. You will have to go step by step. Jesus said, ask, ye shall receive. Seek, ye shall find. Knock, and ye shall be opened unto you. It is, I was thinking yesterday, ask, what do you ask? When you go to the church, what do you ask? Some people ask, Lord, take away from my disease, give me money, nice car, nice home, husband, wife, children. These are the things, a lot of, a list of demand. We go, we're taking that list, we go to the church or temple and we bow down and we pray. Ask. Look, you must ask. And then you will receive. The moment we try to receive, them, then we inquire. I said, we ask, who is that person? We become curious. That is the second stage, seek. Seek, he shall find. We wonder, we do not see the creature, but we must seek the creature. So that is the second stage. When we seek the creature, then do you know what happens? We see that he is our father, he is our mother, he is our protector, he is our savior. All these things come, then we try to establish relationship with him. The moment we have that relationship with God, look what Christ said, knock and it shall be opened unto you. You do not knock a stranger's house, you knock the house whom you know. So at that time you know God, so you knock at his house, then he will receive you. These are the different stages, levels of spiritual <coughs> unfoldment. Atmanam vidhi, know thyself. How? This Atman cannot be realized through probochanena, by reading the scriptures. Bahuna shrutina, hearing the sermons on YouTube. Na medhaya, through keen intellect. Whom it chooses, Atman reveals himself, itself unto that person. Chooses. At that time, his one-pointed mind goes towards the Atman. Then it comes back. Atman reveals itself. Do you know the problem? Who is the barrier between God and ourselves? Maya. Ignorance. A veil of ignorance. That veil of ignorance, who will cut? You will, you will, because the veil, you made it, you will have to cut that veil. That is called self-effort. Then, of course, God will help you, and then he will reveal himself to you. So, Divine grace and the self-effort, they go together. As I always say, that if you want to cut a cloth, you need the two blades of a scissors. Self-effort and divine grace. Same thing in the spiritual life. Self-effort and divine grace. And Krishna mentioned, Mami vaje prapadyante mayametam tarantite. Those who take refuge in me, I help them to cross this turbulent ocean of maya. The another verse in the <coughs> Kathopanishad tells us, Yama was telling that how to start the spiritual journey and what are the problems. Navirato dusharita. You cannot enter in this spiritual realm if your character is not good. You must have a good character. Na shantu. Your senses should be controlled. 
no samaitu. Your mind should be settled. Focused toward God. Na santo manusha upi. Suppose you have some desire there inside, in subtle desires, so time to time it goes to God, sometimes it comes back. In the, these are, through the intellect you cannot realize God. So, when you practice spiritual disciplines, you will develop some kind of power. And that power brings ego. And sometimes that is a great obstacle in a spiritual life. We see in the Puranas, some rishis practice austerities and develop occult powers. And they can curse you, can do, destroy you, can do all sorts of things. That you say, be careful. If if every student in the school, they are uh, talking about gun control. If every student has gun in the school, do, could you have oh, self-protection? Do you know what will happen? It will be a mess. Sri Ramakrishna used to test people. Those who would come seeing that this person is not, oh, you go see the Rashmani's temple. Then perhaps another person, he will tell them, visit me time to time. The third person, he will say, I gave you some instruction. Are you following? The fourth person, he will say, oh, you are not getting meditation. Come here. He will repeat. He will write a mantra on your tongue and go and meditate. You see, each person is different. In the spiritual life also, instructions should be person to person, you know, not same instruction does not go anywhere. When Aim came and said, Sir, could you tell me how can I put my mind in God? Ramakrishna's first instruction. Chant God's name, Ishare Nam Gunogan. Repeat the mantra. Second, have the company of the holy. Third, Time to time, go to a solitude and think and forth, meditate in the mind, in the corner of your room, and in the forest. And fifth, discriminate, sada sada bichar. And seventh, bakulata, yearning, longing for God. Then he instructed the householders, stay in this world like a maid servant of a rich home. He does everything, but his mind is at home to look after his own son, her own son. Be satisfied with plain clothes and plain food. Don't lose search the luxury. Morning and evening, try to think about God. If you have no time, at just time, clap your hand and chant God's name a few times. Stages. There are various stages. According to non-dualistic Vedanta, there are seven stages to reach the goal. First, Jigansha. Inquiry. I'm curious to know about God, about the spiritual life. Second, Bichar. Take instruction from the script of the Guru and the study the scripture and practice non-attachment and discriminate what is real, what is unreal. In the third stage, tonu manusha, tonu mind becomes light, the mind becomes heavy if you have too many desires. And if you have no desires, mind is, becomes light and it flies up. That is called third stage. Fourth stage, he, at that time his mind is, is, does not taste outside world at all. He tries to stay inside. In the fifth stage, he experiences the Atman. 
in this sixth stage he has firm conviction experience about the self and the seventh stage he is in samadhi one of the beautiful parables of ramakrishna was egiye jao go forward a wood cutter was a poor person cutting wood selling the market so holy man told this wood cutter go forward the wood cutter was thinking this holy man asked me to go forward let me see what is out what is in in front he found a sandalwood forest sandalwood is very expensive he sold that sandalwood and became got a lot of money then he was thinking the the holy man did not ask me to stop there let me go forward he found then got copper mine silver mine gold mine diamond mine and became very rich this is the parable sri ramakrishna told his devotees so in his spiritual life we must go forward go forward we must go step by step and finally we shall reach our goal thank you um atma me shuddhantam jyoti raham viraja vi papma bhuyasam antaratma me shuddhantam jyoti raham viraja vi papma bhuyasam paramatma me shuddhantam jyoti raham viraja vi papma bhuyasam may my body be pure may i be free from impurities and ignorance may i realize myself as the light divine may my mind be pure may i be free from impurities and ignorance may i realize myself as the light divine may my soul be pure may i be free from impurities and ignorance may i realize myself as the light divine om shanti 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 peace peace is going to work